Hello and welcome to this video covering the autonomic nerves of the pelvis. We are going to take a detailed look at how the sympathetic nerves and the parasympathetic nerves innervate structures inside the pelvic cavity via a schematic diagram. We're going to look at the subsidiary plexuses first of all. We've got the vesicle plexus which is surrounding the bladder. We've got the prostatic plexus, the utero-vaginal plexus and the rectal plexus. Of course, some of that anatomy is relevant to the male, some to the female, and some to both. So I'll let you figure out which one's which. Hopefully it shouldn't be too tricky. Now we can see two yellow circles coming on screen now, and they represent the inferior hypogastric plexus. And the inferior hypogastric plexus is a larger plexus inside the pelvic cavity that feeds into those subsidiary plexuses. Now in reality they tend to be a single plexus but we've drawn them here as two separate ones, a left and a right. So the inferior hypogastric plexus contains a mixture of parasympathetic and sympathetic nerves. Now S2 to S4 is where we would find the parasympathetic contribution coming out as pelvic splanchnic nerves. We can see those now via the red arrows joining into the inferior hypogastric plexus. So these are pelvic splanchnic nerves that come from S2 to S4 and contribute directly to the inferior hypogastric plexus. So in green we have any plexus which is mixed and in red we have the contribution from the parasympathetic nerve supply. We now need to figure out exactly where the sympathetic nerves are coming from. So the pelvic splanchnic nerves are parasympathetic. We now need to draw on some additional structures to figure out exactly where the sympathetic contributions will arise. So we're going to draw on the bifurcation of the aorta right here. And we are going to represent the superior hypogastric plexus as a blue circle. Now the superior hypogastric plexus sits around the level of L5, around the level of the sacral promontory, and it will feed into the inferior hypogastric plexus via two nerves, a left and a right hypogastric nerve. So they will journey deep inside the pelvis, cross the pelvic brim in order to enter deep inside the pelvis to contribute to the inferior hypogastric plexus. So now we can see that our inferior hypogastric plexus is going to be a mixed plexus and later on we will draw a green circle around it to make sure that we know that it is mixed. Coming on screen now we can represent the sympathetic chain and the sympathetic chain comes down on the left and the right hand side to join in the pelvis via the ganglion impar, which is a central ganglion joining the left and the right hand side. So now we need to think about how individual nerves would leave the sympathetic chain to contribute to the superior hypogastric plexus. We can see some blue lines coming on now. These are thoracolumbar splanchnic nerves arising from T10 to L2. They will leave the sympathetic chain and journey into the superior hypogastric plexus. So there is in fact two ways by which the sympathetic nerves can enter into the pelvic cavity and supply pelvic viscera. There is of course the way we've just described but there's an alternative way and that way would be for the sympathetic nerves to descend within the sympathetic chain deep inside to the pelvic cavity down to the ganglion impar and outflow from there via named nerves called sacral splanchnic nerves. So the sacral splanchnic nerves are sympathetic. Remember, S for sacral, S for sympathetic. Don't get these confused with those nerves we talked about earlier called the pelvic splanchnic nerves. Remember, P for pelvic, P for parasympathetic. So the sacral splanchnic nerves will enter into the fibers of the inferior hypogastric plexus, and we need to draw a green circle around that now to make sure that we represent that as a mixed plexus of nerves. Of course coming from the sympathetic chain would also be small grey rami communicantes to allow the sympathetic nerves to travel into somatic nerves that would predominantly be going to the perineum and to the lower limb. We also mustn't forget the important contribution from S2, S3, S4 which is the pudendal nerve, a somatic nerve 
involved in innovating erectile tissue and key structures within the perineum as well. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time. Subscribe to Soton Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain.